Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, BodyLogics, the Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men, 20% off. Online stretching programs with Eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it. So it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have it, to get exclusive offers to your sport. And it's definitely worth worth it. So do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20, takes 20 seconds. So go do it and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh he's the co-founder and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at uh, at Living Sisu and with a bunch of elite athletes and you learn a lot from like the athletes' determination, the resiliency, everything to what me made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So Go on. I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On The Spot Sports. I'm Jack. In today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, current professional hockey goalie, Hayden Stewart. Hayden is currently playing the SBHO with the Birmingham Bulls and also spent some time this season in the AHO with the Cleveland Monsters. Hayden played his junior hockey days in both the USHO and the NAL before playing four years of NCAA Division I hockey for Cornell University. Hayden is currently in his third year pro, spending time in the Federal Hockey League, Southern Professional Hockey League, and the East Coast Hockey League, as well as the American Hockey League. So welcome to the show, Hayden Stewart. Thank you for having me. Excited to be on. Yeah, no problem. So like, how you been? Like, you were in Cleveland, and you just got back to Birmingham. So like, how's everything going with you? It's good. It's good. Uh, I mean, it's a COVID season, so... Uh, Things are a little different this year, but um, I'm very grateful to be playing this year, and uh, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, to start things out, we'll we'll get into the season a little bit later here. But like, you grew up in Rockford, Illinois. It's like, what was youth hockey like for you growing up in Illinois? Yep. Uh, well, I played. Uh, they had the Ice Hogs there, which is the AHL team. Um, so that's how I got into hockey. But I played for the the local club there, and then I went to play. Uh, Triple A hockey in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, for a bunch of years, and then I played one year with Team Illinois in Chicago, and that's my that was my uh, youth hockey experience. So there's yeah. a lot of hockey around there. Yeah, for sure. It's good good to get another Illinois kid on just because I'm also from Illinois, so it's good uh -huh. to, good to have that familiarity with everything around youth hockey. Yeah. So like when when did you realize that you wanted to play hockey? Like how old were you when you chose uh, to play hockey? Like what made you become like a goaltender? Let's see. I was probably I was probably five when I first wanted to start playing hockey. Uh, my first year of hockey, I was six. And then being a goalie, I think just going to the the ice hog games there and watching the goalies, I think that to me there's just something special about that. Um, something that inspired me a little bit a little bit differently, and I'm not sure why. But uh, that's my backstory behind it. I, I, I enjoyed watching those guys, and then uh, I wanted to try it myself. And so I played, got to play a little bit of goalie my first couple of years and then uh, decided I wanted to play full time. Yeah, so, like, what was that moment where you're like, I want to play goalie full time? I would say even maybe even, like, my second year of hockey, I might have already been thinking that. Um, but my parents wanted me to learn how, wanted me to learn how to skate really well first, so um, they wouldn't let me play goalie all the time. So, which I'm grateful for because uh, skating is a big part. But I'd say I'd say kind of my second year of hockey, even even when I was young as like six or seven, that I uh, I had decided I think I wanted to play goalie full time. 
Yeah, that that's awesome. Just you need to be a good skater to be a goaltender. Like if you're not a good skater, like you're it's not gonna be that fun for you. But it's good that you got that experience. Like how important was learning how to skate and learning how to like properly do it well and like the transition from like forward to a goalie? Um I think it's I think it's really important. I think the biggest thing probably is is being comfortable on your edges. Um uh, because once you start playing goalie, it's a lot of edge work and a lot of, a lot of using your edges different ways. So I think, you know, playing out and, and learning how to use them first is a big, big part of transitioning into being a, a good goalie. Yeah, absolutely. And just, just from the fact that I was a forward before I turned goalie and you could tell so much with like the difference, and like mm-hmm. the edge work and you, you have to be like sharp on your edges all the time as a goalie and just, yeah change directions all the time and just you need to hold them as long as you can yeah exactly so if so if you can uh, if you can learn to do that then um that's a big part of playing goalie so you have you have a good chunk of it down and you just kind of go get to technique from there exactly it's like then after your youth hockey days you decided to play junior hockey it's like what was the process like to get a shot in the ushl for the muskegon lumberjacks and like did you attend like a camp get a trial um, like what happened there to get you get your chance there let's see i had i had gone to like the ushl combine i guess they call it but i i was never drafted um i'd never been contacted by a ushl team before that year um i maybe went to a couple uh NAHL and all tryout camps, um, but didn't get anything there, but it was just um, the way I played that season. Uh, I ended up getting called up in January. So it was, so really it, things can kind of turn around fast. So I, I didn't have really have any really contact before that. Um, I had a good start to the season, my first year of, of midget major, and then uh, things kind of took off from there. Yeah. So like, what was that call like when you got, got the call to come up to the USHL and, <laughs> from midget mine midget major and just just that transition like how you, like the fast adjustment you had to make yeah um well it's pretty awesome i was pretty excited i'd always wanted to play in, in the ushl um and i hadn't had anything you know going for that before that season so it was kind of kind of out of nowhere as i was a little bit in disbelief but i was definitely excited to go and then uh i mean from there just moving up the game is just a little bit faster and obviously the players a little bit more skilled so just kind of getting used, just kind of adjusting to that took a little, took a little while. Yeah, for sure. So then you play, you got to play in 12 games. Like what was that first taste of junior hockey, like in Muskegon, just being able Um, to just live it out for a little bit. Yeah, I I really enjoyed it. Um, You know, it's, it's kind of the first, you know, you're almost playing full-time hockey for the first time. Um, So kind of that experience and being able to do that, I thought was really awesome. I, I enjoyed it. Um, and then just, you know, that, that year was a lot of, a lot of, uh, kind of making a little bit of a big jump for my game and and working to do that so that I could play at that level. Yeah. So like, what did you have to do to like help yourself, like jump into the, the USHL level from midget major and just the, just being able to like, just the guys get stronger, the guys, everything is quicker. It's like, what do you have to adjust to help your game? Well, the, the biggest thing when you go from, when you go from one level up to any other level is always the speed. Um, doesn't matter what, what level it is. So, um, you know, the, things happen faster, but at, at the same time as a goalie, uh, you know, while the forwards are more skilled, the guys playing defense are better. So things kind of happen faster. So it's, it's more about kind of reading and always being in a good position and the puck will hit you. Um, I'd say that's kind of the biggest thing, you know, there were times where I'd be too aggressive, um, which I could get away with, but I had to, but once I got to the USHL, I had to learn to kind of reel that in a little bit and uh, learn how to play it a little bit more situational. Yeah. And that that's huge. Cause like the depth, like really does matter. Cause if you mm-hmm. play aggressive, you can't get to that backdoor play. But if, right. you, if you're like in a, like a neutral stance, you could get to that back door. So it just depends on yep. like the situation, like you were saying, and just, it's just, it's a lot of just like skills and like experience that you mm-hmm. have to gather from just mm-hmm. playing games, I guess you could just say. Yeah. Because, you know, um, 
because things happen so fast, you can't, you can't really think about it during the game. It's, it has to be a lot of your reaction has to be natural. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of want to, you have to spend, yeah, it takes a little bit of time to, to work on it and get it more into a, a natural habit. Yeah. So like how long did it take you to adjust to that and just like feel mm. comfortable with how, how your game is and how you adjusted? Well, let's see. Honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't that season. Um, the next season I went to the Null, and uh, when I was there, I just kind of got to play all the time. And so going there was really good for me because, uh, you know, while it's technically a lower level, it's junior hockey and it's good junior hockey. And so um, you're kind of seeing a lot of situations and, and, and you're figuring out the games down there. And uh, um, that was really good. It gave me a chance to get into a lot of games to make those reads and to get, gain that experience. And there's a lot of, a lot of good goalies that have come out of the Null for that reason yeah so you get sent you get sent down to the null and just like did you take getting sent down in a bad way did you look at it like you're playing more games and you just just yeah. to get that confidence going um i think you know when i first when i initially got sent down uh like the first day i think i was upset um but one of the things you have to realize as a goalie is i think it's easy to you know, or any player for that matter. I think it's really easy to get caught up in the level that you're playing at. Um, but I always think the most, the most important thing for you is that you're playing, you're playing a lot. Um, you know, so even if you're at whatever you'd call a little bit lower level, if, if you're playing all the time, that's really good for you because you, you develop super fast. Yeah, exactly. And just a lot of people would get like really down on themselves, but you're playing. Mm -hmm. So like, mm -hmm. that's all you can ask for as a goalie is to get mm -hmm. that experience, get the, get the reps in and just play as often as you can. Cause none of us yeah. want to be sitting on a bench or yeah. not playing as often. So we just gotta mm -hmm. get in the game. Exactly. I mean, I mean, it, it's, it's obviously human nature. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be upset um, with setbacks like that. And it's okay it's okay to, to feel that way. But, um, you know, what you have to do is, is you just, you have to, to remember that, uh, it's all about making your game better. And this is what, what will make your game better. And you can still work on your game just as well. Um, yeah. and even better at, at, at those levels. So. Yeah. hundred percent. So you played down in Corpus Christi for the ice race. Like what was it like mm -hmm. playing in the Nall South division? Uh, I loved it. Um, I mean, the travel is really far. But uh, Corpus Christi is 75 degrees year round, um, sunny, and um, the fans there are awesome, and the facilities there are cool. They're great organization, top to bottom. So uh, being there, I, I that was uh, I always try to think, and that might have been maybe my most fun year of hockey. Um, it really sticks out to me. So uh, and and it was good, and it's good hockey down there, and. Uh, the only thing about the Null South is the travel is super far, but uh, it's worth it, I think. Yeah, that that's awesome. Just like seventy five degrees, like year round, like coming from mm -hmm. Chicago, the Chicago yeah. area, like that's uh, that's a whole lot better than staying in the Midwest, where it's could be like seventy one day and then forty the next day. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so like, how did you take like all this like confidence in uh the next year when you get moved up back to the USHL? Well, I think. Again, I think uh, it was just the experience from that season um, that I think once I got back to the USHL, my game had by that time adjusted to junior hockey and adjusted to that speed. So, um, you know, going up isn't necessarily, uh, you know, like when you go up, it's, you're, it's not like the game is harder, you know, yeah. um, it's just faster, but, but you adjust to that after practicing for a little bit. Yeah, so then you go into Dubuque to, for the Fighting Saints in the USHL. It's like, what was your experience in Dubuque and just play, getting to play games? Because you also got to play games there. It's like, yeah. what was that whole thing like? Um, I had, a lot, of, I had a, lot of, a lot of fun playing for Dubuque. Um, again, like, you know, the organization there was awesome. And I felt like uh, – I'm trying to think. I mean, I mean we, were, we were a good team. Um, we were very structured. So, so playing games, I felt like there helped me kind of work on how I needed to play maybe within that particular structure or 
or ways that I could, could take my, or make my game better with a team that plays with that much structure like that. Yeah. And like how much easier it was it for you since you guys had all that structure and just being able to like adjust going into Dubuque and a new to- new team, new space mm-hmm. and just being able to feel comfortable there. Well, for a goalie, uh, you know, if you have, if you're, if you have a lot of structure, uh, makes you look better. So, uh, makes it a little bit easier for you. And, uh, so I kind of felt like that was that was part of of being there. Yeah, that that's awesome. That's something you all goalies want to have is just you have a feeling that you want to be that you, they you're wanted there and that you want mm-hmm. to be there. Right. Yeah. So then you get you get also get moved that year to mm-hmm. another USHL team, the Indiana Ice, where you yep. went thirteen and one that, during your fourteen games there. It's like mm-hmm. what what helped you become so successful during that that experience with the with indiana and just being able to ride that in a, going into college next year yeah uh well my last my last couple of games on dubuque i hadn't played my best hockey and um so i think it's easy to so i think going to indy kind of gave me a fresh start and, and kind of just reset everything um you know like the last couple of games i played that i didn't play my best like those were kind of gone uh and that's important so I felt like when I went there, I was just kind of able to reset, um, just focus on, on tracking the puck and, uh, and then going on the run is just one, you know, the, that's just one game at a time, just focusing on one game at a time is really all it is. And then somehow, and then, you know, you, you blink and you end up stringing them together, but, uh, just one game at a time. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, for sure. And it's, I think it's really important that you brought up like how, like you weren't playing the best in Dubuque, like the last couple of games, then, you like went in with a fresh start, fresh mind. It's like mm-hmm. during your time, the last few games with Dubuque, like what was your mindset like? And especially like when things aren't going your way, you're going to be like down on yourself and like, yeah, you never know what's going to happen after that. So like, what, what was your mindset there? Well, I think when I was there, you know, it's very easy to feel like you have to try, try harder. Or you're, you're not trying hard enough. You're, you know what I mean? So you end up trying yeah. too hard and you kind of end up overthinking a little bit. Um, I mean, it happens all the time. Um, you know, like Carrie Price this year said the same thing. So, but so I'm trying, I'm trying to think back. Yeah. I think I was kind of trying too hard overthinking. I wanted to change my game, but I really didn't need to do that. Um, so when I got to Indy, there wasn't really any, any overthinking. It was just a, it was just a clean start or a clean slate, fresh start. And I think that that, you know, being able to get that during a, during a season, so at, so at that point in my career, when I had a bad game, it would kind of linger with me for a while. Um, it would bother me a lot, which is, which is fine. That's normal. But I think once you get to the next game, you have to, that game has to not exist. Like it, it never happened. And the next game is a completely, completely different game, no matter what happened in the last game. So I think that's kind of how I've transitioned now to where um, as long as, as long as you play goalie, there's going to be bad games. It's yeah. nobody can, nobody can get away, away from it. So the key is really just to, in your mind it's you know it's so it's so uh it's so clean that it's like the game never happened yeah exactly and like i used to play like that with that mindset with where it like mm-hmm. linger with me a little bit and like like you give up six goals the game before and then mm-hmm. you start thinking about it the next game what do you think is going to happen you're going to give up another six goals yeah but like i've just learned just like forget about it like you said and just <laughs> Mm-hmm. It just seemed like that game didn't exist and it really mm-hmm. does like help your mindset overall and just you being able to play smoothly and freely without anything about uh, backstop mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly and 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 you can learn from the game you can you know maybe my preparation was good wasn't as good as it could have been uh could have been you know maybe this is what i could have done on these goals um but you learn from it and you take it with you but as far as you know letting it weigh you down you don't yeah, exactly. You, you can at that point it's just mm-hmm. going to hurt your game overall. Right. So then going into uh, your first season of college hockey here, you committed to uh, Cornell University Division One hockey. So, like, what was the process like to find Cornell and have it be your school for the next four years? Um, I had I had talked to some other schools and um, it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to describe, but I just feel like uh, Cornell just felt like the best fit for me. Um, I had never visited or anything, but my teammate on Indy was committed to Cornell. And, uh, so I kind of bounced a lot of questions off him and, um, you kind of get a feeling what, what the best fit for you will be in your gut. So that's, 
it was kind of just a gut decision. Yeah. And you had that familiarity with your teammate committing there. So it's, mm-hmm. so it definitely does help a little bit there. Yeah, exactly. So then going into your first year of college hockey, like, did you have any expectations going in or like, did you expect anything at all going into your first season? No, no. I just wanted to get in there and, and work on my game um, as hard as I could and kind of get it up to that new, that new speed of college hockey. Yes. That that's great that you, you didn't, that like the expectations weren't really there. You're just going to go with what, what, with what happened. Mm-hmm. So you play in 11 games your freshman year where you went mm-hmm. two, five and one. So like, what was it like mm-hmm. playing a decent amount of games your first year um, when some freshmen get like one or two starts their first yeah. year? Uh, it was awesome. I, I was really grateful that I had that opportunity. Um, and I, and I felt like that was a good, that was a good year for me. Like, uh, I felt, I felt confident after being able to get in that many games and, uh, play well for the most part. So. Yeah, that's, that's great stuff there. So like, then like how important was it having a strong mindset throughout your college career and going into your pro years a little bit, like what would you do to keep your, your mindset positive and not just overthink like you were doing in juniors? Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes even in college, I would, I would overthink the next game too um, if I didn't have my best game. Um, but I think, let's see, mentally, as far as resetting, I think, yeah, you just, I mean, you just kind of, you just kind of get better at it. You, you know, you're going to have bad games. I think if you're just conscious of how you want to handle it, which is you just want to completely reset and go into the next game and you just have to, you have to realize that there's, you know, if you have a bad game, there's no, no correlation with the next game with that game. Yeah, that's, yeah. you know the next game is going to be totally different like you might have gotten bad bounces that you know that's not going to happen the next game you know so yeah for sure and just you can't dwell on it like you like we were no. pretty much talking about earlier like you got to just forget about it and like completely forget that it happened mm-hmm. exactly yeah so um, then going yeah okay go ahead so then going into like your second year like what, what was your thought process about like going into your second year and just overall like how how do you think that year went for you I think that that year what I really wanted to, to get was more consistency for myself um, I thought I thought I played well in in various games freshman year um, but I wanted to kind of have that really consistent consistency to my game and I think um, that was kind of what I was working on maybe the next two years and I'm trying to think that year I know I had I think that was the year yeah, I didn't, I didn't play as much. And I, when I did play, I know I played against Ohio state and I didn't play well. Um, so that was tough, but, uh, you know, again, it's, it's the same thing. You just keep going and you keep working on your game. Yeah. So like how hard was that just like not play as often, but like whenever you get that opportunity to take, take the opportunity, even if there was against mm-hmm. Ohio state and also yep. just like with practices, like playing practices, like games pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, and that's, that's huge. Um, if you, if you play your practice, I found, you know, if you play your practices like games, when you get into a game, um, your instincts will be like things happen. So things happen fast. So it has to be a lot of instinct. So if you're playing practice the right way, when you get into a game, you just have to trust it because you, it, your skills and your instincts will be there for you. Yeah, exactly. So then going into the next two years really quick here, uh, you played nine game, nine games in those two years, like, mm-hmm. Is, and that last year was probably your best year, I would say, or maybe mm-hmm. you would say mm-hmm. with, so like, yep. what was that, those two years, like for your development and just being able to get that opportunity your senior year to put up some more wins? It was good. Uh, like, let's see, I had, I, I, you know, the junior and senior year were tough because I was injured a lot during them. Um, so obviously that wasn't fun, but I felt like as I had gotten into senior year, I'd kind of gotten that consistency and I'd kind of, and I'd gotten my game to, to a good spot for college hockey. And, and so when senior year came, um, just, you know, because I, because uh, the work had been put in, I felt like when I got into games, I was more consistent. Like I wanted my game was better obviously than my first two years. And so, you know, you just kind of see how it builds on itself. Yeah, for sure. So then, like you said, you're, you were injured a few times during those years. Like, what did you do to, like, help yourself recover and just, like, make sure that you don't come back too early and re-injure yourself and then just trying to, like, find your game again? 
Yeah, so um I had a bunch, so I had shoulder surgery, you know, you you just have to be as far as that was concerned, it was just kind of being diligent about the rehab and the therapy. Um and not you know, it's it's not easy to to, to get back from surgery, isn't um but I think, you know, after that you just you're excited to be back on the ice after any injury. So when you come back, you you're excited to be out there and, and you have kind of a fresh start. So um you kind of have a good a good motivation to to be working on your game and excited to be back out there. Yeah, absolutely. You're just excited to get back out there whenever you can. Just yeah, just get back with the boys and start playing games and just even if it's just exactly practices and just mm -hmm. just being there and like it helps you overall with pretty much everything. exactly. Yeah. So then exactly. after your senior year, you decide to go pro where you find yourself getting an opportunity fresh out of your last game with the Cincinnati Cyclones in the East Coast mm -hmm. Hockey League. And you mm -hmm. went two and two that year. You got four games. Like, what was your first taste of pro hockey like? Um, it was good. I mean, it's a it's a different style of game than colleges. College is much more tight and locked down, and uh, at least in the, the ECHL, there is a little bit more open, um, a little bit more lateral plays. Um, so I didn't feel like it was a big adjustment. Um, I felt like the speed and you know was maybe a little bit faster, but. But I didn't feel like I had to make a big adjust, a big jump from uh, from college to pro there. Yeah. So like getting your first game in a, in a Cincinnati uniform, like what was the emotions going through you and just being able to play your first pro game? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was pretty nervous, um, but, you know, I was obviously very excited for the opportunity. So it's kind of a bit of both, you know, nerves and excitement. And, uh, you know, but, but when the puck drops, you, you're not, you don't really think about that as much. You're just kind of playing. You know? Yeah. So like getting that, when the buzzer, uh, went off and you got your first pro win, like, well, how, how happy were you when that happened? Um, I was pretty excited. I was pretty happy. Um, it was, I still remember that game to this day. It was, I was just thinking about how much fun it is. I mean, how much fun I was having, um, just. Uh, it was cool. <laughs> yeah, can't can't put it any other way, but but yes, yeah. yeah, like yeah. So then, in your first official year of pro hockey, you go from the Knoxville Ice Bears and the SPHL to the Orlando mm -hmm. Solar Bears and the ECHL, and then finally the Fort Wayne Comets in the Coast. It's so like, what was uh -huh. your first official year of pro hockey like going from like the SP to the Coast? Um, you know what I I I really enjoyed that year of hockey. Um. So it's so going from college to pro, you're playing a lot more games now. And uh, I think that was maybe the biggest difference. And so I thought that that was maybe going to be a really weird adjustment. But, uh, you know, like I said earlier, you just kind of take it one game at a time. So, you know, you have midweek games and stuff, but you, but you prepare the same way. And so if, you, if you're just going one game at a time, you prepare the same way, then you kind of just get used to the rhythm. Yeah, so you're playing a lot more games, and it's a lot busier of a schedule with, like, games and all that. It's so like, what would you do to help yourself recover during games and just practices? Well, I think I think it's really important that you, uh, you know, like you warm up and prepare yourself the right way before practice um, on a daily basis and games, obviously. Um, you know, if you have things that bother you, you try to – do some therapy or something to keep them from getting any worse and hopefully make them better. Not always easy during the season because your body, you know, is under a lot. It's, it's a taxing, it's taxing. Um, and then, I mean, aside from that, like you have to be, it sound. I mean, it's cliche, but hydration and, and sleep are two huge things too, to keep you going during the season. Yeah, absolutely. And that's probably some of the most important things as an athlete is just to sleep, nutrition, just mm -hmm. recover the body and just do mm -hmm. anything you can to help your help yourself be ready to go every every day when you go to out yep. practice, go out to a game, like any anywhere. Exactly. Exactly. Really important. Exactly. So like going into Knoxville a little bit here, you you started 19 games. So and you went eleven and six during that time. So like what was what was it like being so successful that first year in Knoxville and just winning so many games during that time? Um, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think back. I, I, 
it was really good. I mean, it, it was kind of cool um, playing that many games. Like I enjoyed it. Um, and I think you don't really realize that you just kind of, you know, like I said, playing one game at a time. So kind of, you know, after each win, it was just a lot of fun and, uh, you know, then, then get ready to play for the next one. And, and, uh, you know, eventually you look back and you strung some games together. So, um, that's the best way I can put it. Yeah. That's a, that's a great way to put it there. So then what was like the biggest thing you had to learn your first full year of pro hockey? If you're gonna, mm-hmm. if you're going to be successful, move up, keep moving up the ranks. Yeah, I think, I think a big thing is your habits and routines for sure, because they keep you consistent. They keep you healthy um, over that, over that span of time. And um, you know, just, just the way you want to prepare for games. And then as you play, you gain experience and you get better at managing games and uh, you know, managing your emotions during the game. So as, as you kind of gain experience, you just kind of get better and better. And um I realized how much of it is just kind of taking care of your body and keeping it healthy. Yeah. That's, that's the most important part. Cause if you're not keeping yourself healthy, they're not going to be able to play that that often. Just right. like r- the routines and everything, like it gets you dialed in really quickly and you're just able to go right from the, right from the get go, mm-hmm. whenever, whenever you get put in, especially if you get put in like in midway through a game, like you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're already ready, ready to go from at that point. Exactly. So then you go up to Orlando. It's so like, what was it like playing in Orlando and playing in the warm weather year round? Uh, it was cool. Orlando is a really nice spot. Uh, they have a great setup there. And, uh, you know, you can't complain playing in Florida and it's warm all the time. Yeah, that's, so, that's for sure. Mm. And just you're, you, it's, you can go to the beach in middle of February, middle of January, and just it'll, it'll be warm at that point. Exactly. So that was obviously, uh, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, for sure. So then you go in the following year, you stay in the SBHO with the Knoxville Ice Bears and the Macon Mayhem. Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. what was it like playing for Macon and where the season got like a bit crazy towards the end when Coach yeah. came into play? Um, Macon, I, I had a lot of fun playing there. Um, it, that, that, the, the unique experience with Macon that's kind of cool is we were last place in the league when I got there. And uh, we brought a few guys in. And, and by the end of it, I think we were in a playoff spot. So. Um, whenever you can go in in that kind of situation and, uh, you know, the boys kind of get on a run, um, it's a lot of fun. So I think, you know, and it got cut short, obviously, with COVID, but uh, but we were having a lot of fun that year. And, and going on a run like that is, is uh, it's a unique experience. And it's, I, I really I really enjoyed it. Yeah, just getting that opportunity to play, like coming to a last place team, then just mm-hmm. putting up a string of games where you're winning and just mm-hmm. getting into a playoff spot, like that must be unreal. And just like you're taking advantage of that opportunity because yeah. they came in just looking for someone to do something, and then you guys come in and go up the go up the standings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was uh, I could see us getting better over the time I was there, and uh, we were really heating up going into playoffs. So would have been cool to see how we did yeah that's that's unreal so then going into this year it was one crazy off season with no one knowing when the season will start mm-hmm. like if teams are going to play like mm-hmm. like what would you do during the off season especially since it was probably like nine ten months something like that and just yeah helping yourself develop throughout the time of uncertainty with the season well i think uh you know during lockdown i i would just do workouts at home and and things like that like everybody else would maybe do some ball drills off the wall but after that after things kind of opened up and guys were getting on the ice and stuff i think really all i did was just kind of do my normal off season it was just extended yeah um, so like so what just, did you work on during that time well i was i was working on the big thing with my game is you know uh being a little bit more I'd say being less aggressive all the time. So kind of having the extra time to work on that and, and working on, uh, you know, when, when I should be more aggressive, when I should be less aggressive, um, you know, not chasing plays. I think that that was probably the biggest thing I was working on. Yeah. And do you, do you think it helped uh, going into this season when you started playing games and just seeing the difference from your, how you were last year to this year? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's always fun when you can, uh, when you can go into games and you can see it kind of translate. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's, it was fun to see that. 
So then going into this season, you first started out in Knoxville where you played a game. Then you uh-huh. played 11 games in Birmingham and then got loaned out to Cleveland Monsters of mm-hmm. the AHL. It's like, how crazy has this season been so far? And like, what did you learn from all these experiences that you've had so far? Well, I think, I think, uh, you know, going from here up to Cleveland, I just kind of learned how the game is a little bit different there. Um, so, you know, you try to, you try to make your game compatible with all the levels, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so I kind of know how the game is there and I play and you want to try to, and you know, I'm trying to think, trying to think how to word this the right way, but. I would say you take what you learned up there and you bring it to whatever level you're playing at and you, you work on your game so that hopefully you can, you can be at that level and be used to it and be good when you get there so you can make the most of an opportunity, you know? Yeah, exactly. I like how you said that and just like find that opportunity and like bring it back after mm-hmm. you get that opportunity and bring it back to whatever level you're playing and just applying everything you learned through playing exactly. at, the, at the higher level and just, developing yourself even further from that point yeah exactly that's exactly exactly what it is yeah so what what was that getting that call like to cleveland like just and like how did how did it end up happening did they just call you and say that yeah cleveland needed a goalie yeah that's pretty much what happened they just called me said they needed a goalie would like to bring me up um you know they didn't know how long it was going to be for or, but uh that was okay with me i was just excited to, to get the opportunity and go up and learn as much as i could while i was there yeah, that's awesome. So, like, th- I saw that you backed up a few games there. So, like, what was it like backing up the games there and just being being able to watch the starting goalie and just being yeah. watching the guys up there? Well, I learned a ton. I learned, uh, you know, I learned a lot from the goalie and I learned a lot from watching the players. Um, just kind of things that they do during games that are different than practice because, you know, practice, they have a lot of time and space, so it's way different. Um, in a game, they don't have that luxury. So kind of the different plays that they'd make or the things that they would do in a game, it was interesting to watch that and uh, kind of translate that into practices. Yeah, that's great that you learned that all there and just being able to apply it back to where you're at now with Birmingham. Just mm-hmm. how, how is the season going for you in Birmingham? It's good. I mean, uh, right now, um, we are – we're in, well, there's only five teams in the league, but we're in last place right now. And uh, we're in that spot again, like I was in last year, where we can, uh, you know, get on a run and get into a playoff spot. So I think looking forward to that, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, good luck the rest of the way in uh, in uh, Birmingham. And just I have a few more questions for you before uh, we get this okay. thing over with. So do you have any tips for goaltenders looking to get to that next level? Yeah, I, I think I think our I think the maybe a couple of tips that I would give them would be um, learn as much as you can and then work as hard as you can to implement that into your game. Yeah. It's a, and I think if you do tip. those things, you keep getting better. Yeah. hundred percent agree with you there. It's like, what, like, what have you, like, what has been like your ho- favorite hockey moment so far in your career? Favorite hockey moment. Um, we won the, we won the USHL championship when I was there with Indiana. And uh, that's the first kind of like big championship I've ever won. So I think that was, uh, that was pretty special. That's unreal. That must've been a great experience and just being able to win the championship then uh, partying it up after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had, you know, we had a, that group of guys was awesome. I think as a team, we were well-rounded perfectly, perfect amount of skill and perfect amount of grit. Both are just as important to winning. Um, even though the grit guys might not score, uh, show up on the score sheet as often, but, um, you know, the leadership and everything, um, uh, that was an awesome group to, to win it with. Yeah, that's awesome. And just, you need that to be a successful team and a championship caliber team. And just, mm-hmm. it's awesome. You get that and you know that you guys are going to do big things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So my last question for you is what's uh, your favorite pump up song when you're trying to get in, uh, when you're warming up, uh, putting, getting a little lift in, like, pregame warm-up like what are you listening to favorite pump-up song i don't know if i can give you one song but uh what i usually what i typically listen to when i'm getting ready for a game and and working out is mostly hard rock like the uh like the old hard rock like uh 
like, I don't know, like Breaking Benjamin or like Three Days Grace or um, Disturbed or, you know, any, any sort of that genre. Yeah. Um, when I'm working out, I get mostly that and then a little bit of rap. Yeah, um, and then a little bit of old, like 80s rock, 90s rock in there too. Yeah, can't can't Good go balance. wrong with any of those. Yeah, gotta yeah. get that balance and just whatever whatever gets you going, mm-hmm. like to mm-hmm. get that last set and last rep, like right. whatever you need, just mm-hmm. to play that song yeah. and get get you through it. Yeah, I mean everybody uh, everybody's got a different personality, and they all you know they all need different uh, type of pump up music. But uh, I think for my personality, that's kind of naturally what I'm drawn to. Yeah, I love I love that. So. Uh, Hayden, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. I want to wish you the best of luck with the rest of the season. And I look forward to following your career the rest of the way. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. I was really, uh, really a pleasure to be here and uh, chat hockey with you. And I'm uh, very grateful. So thank oh, yeah. you. No problem.